What's up guys, Shane here with Figure Deck 3D Printing, and today we're going to check out the Anycubic i3 Mega. Welcome back guys. So I received this Anycubic i3 Mega from Gearbest for the purpose of this review, and we're going to dive in and check it out now. So let's open it up, see what's inside. I really don't know anything about this, I just know it's one of the newer printers out there that a lot of people were getting. They offered me to send this one. And I said, why not? I have a CR10 now to play with, but I haven't received any i3 printers to review. I got the, the one Delta, which was just garbage. So we'll see if this one's any better. Probably should stand for this, but you know, it's just what it is. Everything is inside of a bag, it seems here. So first off we have here, the Anycubic i3 Mega user manual. So that's pretty cool. Ooh. It's got lots of stuff in it. I've actually never received a manual, well, a decent manual, I guess. I mean, the CR10 had the pictures, the Cube 3 actually had something, the Monoprice Tech Mini had a little something, so yeah, I guess I have received them, but I mean, it's not bad at all. It's a pretty decent little manual, looks like. And let's get into it. So this bag is in my way. I wonder if this is upside down. I don't know. We're gonna find out though. So we've got one layer of about three quarter inch, foam and we have a very large accessory bag with all kinds of stuff in it we'll go through that in a minute and then we have let's see here it's out it's in there upside down i don't know if it's supposed to be or not Ooh. okay uh the uh ooh, what am i supposed to be screwed in there so the power supply you see me there yes the power supply is loose that's not good. Uh, and here we have the bed on there. So this is the Y-axis. And here we have a screen there in the front. On-off switch on the side. Yeah, it looks like this is supposed to be screwed in. There's something missing. So we're gonna figure that out here in a minute. Uh, so I'm gonna set this to the side. And then we have another big chunk of foam. And then we have, hmm. Another layer of foam, wink. Uh, here we have a full roll of black PLA filament. Roughly a kilogram. Huh, that's pretty sweet. I've never received this much filament. The CR10 was the biggest roll I ever received, and that was kind of that mini roll, which was probably about 100 grams. This is pretty interesting. I can't argue with that. And then we have the assembly here. Ah, here we go. So, I have two screws right here, which probably came from how that power supply is supposed to be secured in there. All right, set those to the side. I need to figure that out. And this is a spacer. Yes, this is a cardboard spacer. And then I'm gonna reach in here and pull this out. Somehow, this is the gantry before the machine. Oh, there's another screw. All right, so it's three screws now. Sorry, I'm kind of off camera. This box is quite large. All right, so three screws. All right, set that there. All right, so here we have the Z. We'll take a look at the, so there's our extruder carriage on there. It is a, whew, like I guess uh, E3D V5, or I guess just a real old J head, the huge heat sink on it. There is a part cooling fan here on the side. It's kind of hard to see, sorry. And if we turn around back here, um, we've got the stool Z axis with lead screws. It's nice in that it's not threaded rod. And it looks like, and here's our X motor, here's our extruder motor, so it is a Bowden setup, obviously, because here's our extruder motor, there's not one on there. Uh, it's using eight millimeter rods there, 10 millimeter rods, looks like, on the Z. So that's a decent improvement. This looks to be pretty well made. I mean, everything here is, this is all metal, aluminum, so that I can't really complain about that. It's nice to see it's not acrylic, uh, it should be a little bit 
sturdier than anything else really I have. It looks like it has four bolts on each side to bolt it to this frame. I can see the mounts there now for that. So that being said, let us uh, make some room here and get ready to put this together. So it doesn't seem to be as quick as the CR10, but that's okay. I'm not really advertising it to be that, but it should be a fairly quick setup here. All right, so let's just go over some of the specs real quick since I have this open. The build size is 210, 210 by 205. Layer resolution 0.05 to 0.3 millimeters. Yeah. Position accuracy on X and Y is 0 0.0125 and the Z is 0 0.002. Single extruder, it comes with a 0 0.4 millimeter nozzle on here. It's made for 1.75 millimeter filament. The print speed is 20 to 100 millimeters a second. They suggest 60 millimeters a second. Travel speed is 100 millimeters a second and it can print PLA, ABS, hips, and wood filament. I would also probably, if you can do ABS, you can probably do PETG but I'm guessing because of whatever this build plate is on here, it looks interesting, so I wanna see what exactly that is. Uh, let's see, max extruder is 260. The max on the print bed is 110. Uh, they say to use Cura, it uses G-code, an SD card. USB port is expert users only. Uh, a lot of people print from USB, I highly do not suggest that. That's worded weird. Anyways, I highly suggest that you use SD card. It's just more better. It can do 110 to 220. It's a 12 volt system. And it weighs about 11 kilograms. So, that's interesting. It gives us some pictures here of how it all looks, what every part is. So that's pretty good for anyone that's new to 3D printing. You can actually know what each of the parts are. Goes through the menu here. And we have a packing list of everything and some assembly instructions. All right, we're gonna be we're gonna be legit about this. So, let's go here to the bag, see what kind of goodies we have. So we have a complete, complete spare extruder. Um, yeah, I'm guessing another zero point, yep, it is 0 0.4. So a complete spare, cannot argue with that, not gonna lie. And then here we have uh, some needle nose pliers, a bunch of wrenches, some flush cutters, uh, gloves, which we are going to wear, as they suggest, uh, an extra end stop. That's not bad. Here's all the screws we're going to need. So we'll end up just taking all of these out, I guess. And we're going to put the safety. So these are great for when you're about to start your print, go underneath your head and grab a little bit of leaky filament out of there. They are crazy sharp though. So again, another thing to really be careful of. Same thing with the tips on these flush cutters are razor sharp up there. They will pierce you, so please be careful. Anyone that is new to 3D printing, anyone that's anyone, actually should be careful regardless of your comfort level with tools. Just be careful. Oh, we have a standard USB cable, uh, 2.0, yep, regular USB cable. And then we have two SD cards. Yeah, so unmarked SD card here with a micro in it and a spare uh, micro to standard US, standard SD, I said USB, sorry. Um, and then we have a flash drive that, oh, this is just an adapter, so it takes micro SD or SD. That's cool, nice to have. Um, some more screws and whatnot. A great big paint scraper that is fairly sharp. Again, I really, really recommend you guys be super careful with these. Huge warning labels everywhere. If I can make it happen this video, I would. Really be careful with these because if you're going under there and your hand's in the way and you go in, this will do serious damage. So please be careful when you use these type of scrapers. I prefer a different kind, but uh, it is a little bit duller than the one that came with the CR10, but still, please be careful. And then we have a few acrylic pieces here, and then we have a, looks like aluminum tube, uh, and this is all for your filament. So this is just your filament holder to hold your rolls. So we'll put this together later. We're not gonna need that for a little while. And that's it for the accessory bag. All right, so the first thing it says to do 
is to put on these gloves because the smooth rods and lead screws may be greased in the factory. I can tell you they already are because I already put my finger on the, on the lead screw and they are indeed doctor. And uh, these are big gloves. So if any of you big boys out there need big gloves, these are it. All right, get rid of that. All right, so unpack and take out the printer accessories, follow figures one, two, and three, and carefully fit the base in the frame and fix them with the eight M5 by eight millimeter hex screws. So that would be these ones right here in a diagonal order and be tightened after all the screws are in place. All right, so let's make a little bit more space here. Still have those three little ones. Need to figure out where those go in that power supply because I don't know. All right, so we're gonna take this, pick up the base, slide this under, and set it down. So I'm just gonna get all these in now. This is the boring part, so come back see me in a minute. Okay, there's that. Those eight screws are in now. Let me kind of turn this around a little bit here. Ooh. And drag it around. This looks to be a filament sensor, a runout sensor right here. So that's kind of just rolling around right now. Okay, so those eight are in. Uh, select the correct voltage. I'm gonna be plugging this into ooh, 110. I have 110 right here. Which I can't do because the thing floats. Oh, son of a gun. All right, let's see if we can't set this up on its side and take a look inside here. So it clearly needs to be mounted in there somehow. And I put this on, I should not have done that. Should have fixed that first, shouldn't I have, Shane? Well, let's see if we can't do it from up top. I wonder if I can slide it. Let's try that. All right, so I'm gonna take the bottom of this printer off to see if I can't slide this bottom plate and be able to re-secure that power supply unit because it is literally just floating around in there like nothing. So that's not a good thing. And we kind of have a little look inside, see what it is. I really didn't want to do this for an unboxing and first print video, but kind of I got no choice at this point. All right, so I'm not really happy with the way they mount the power supply in there. There's two screws in each side, which are too long, so it doesn't actually secure it. And then on the back end, there's a third screw that goes in, and it's the same length as the other ones, and it just pinches it down there. And the other two are just kind of anchor points. So basically, it's just allowing it not to wobble, but it's still, I mean, it still wobbles a little bit. Like, there's no way to tighten this down anymore. I'm gonna get my own screws. So I'm just using some six millimeter M3s to tighten this down. I'll leave their one longer one in there to steady it up, but bam, that's rock solid now. These are garbage. That's a poor design. I understand screws come out during shipping. Stuff happens. Uh, let's take a quick look inside of here, show you guys what's inside. All right, so we have here a heat, so like a change out board right here, breakout board, I guess, of some sorts. The heated bed goes through it. It's not a MOSFET. Oh, this is where all the connectors come in. So all the connectors come in the bottom. And then we have it all going over here to this board, coming over to this board. Um, using their own type of stepper drivers and a humongous two big old capacitors on there. I wonder if this has auto resume. That'd be interesting. Uh, we have a display here in the front. This is the SD card uh, down here which rolls into this board. Uh, this rolls for the LCD. This looks to go to a heated bed and whatnot. That comes in here part of the hub, fans, other things set up here. Uh, essentially, you have the heated bed wired differently here. Our main power is coming in down here. Nice big, oh, 50 millimeter fan blowing down on those capacitors and on these. Uh, just check these connectors here. They have a lot of things uh, hot glued on. So basically just to make sure, that, I mean, hot glue doesn't do any damage. Uh, so it just kind of makes sure that the connectors stay in place, which is nice. And then what's nice is right here, we have all fully insulated spade adapters on everything. It's not raw. They're all on there tight. Again, all here crimped the way they should be. I like that. So that is a big thumbs up on that part, but 
this being super loose, not cool. So here's the one screw I put in and then underneath here is where their like stopper screw is at. So anyways, let's seal this up and get back to the front. Okay. So now that that is done, we continue on. So I've already selected my voltage at 110. So we're gonna to use today. There are three ports with different color, red, green, and black at the bottom right side of the base. There are three different color cable connectors respectively. Accordingly, insert those connectors by the same color as shown in figure three. So we're talking about right down here, a little hard for you guys to see, right down here, there are those three connectors. And surprisingly enough, we have a few connectors here. So we have red, which looks to be our Z motors and it could be, looks like some end stops in there as well. So let's get that connected in. Ooh, it's tight bend. I'll do that last because that's the bottom. And then we have a black connector here, which has the filament sensor and fans of some other sort there. All right, and then we have the green connector, which is a lot of other stuff. These connectors are combined with a lot of other things. And then red. Those are all in there. That's pretty simple. I like it. Okay, and now it's saying, make sure your connectors are well inserted. No pins are bent inside. Uh, figure four, customers may notice there is a ring of zip tie attached to below the plastic ring of the connector. Do not cut it off. So yes, at the bottom of at least the one on the extruder, I guess that is so that it does not come down. Instead of using those 3D printed plugs that can go on there, they're just using a zip tie. That works. I only cut the zip tie when swapping or repairing the hot end. The spool holder, we'll do that in a second. Okay, we have to attach. Oh, here's another screw. Oh, wait. Hold up, hold up. No way, all right, go this way. Ball, magnet, boom. That's pretty funny. That's funny. Yeah, so she's got to make sure this stays downwards facing. And that, I guess, just so if it ever needs to move or anything like that, if it comes off, it's not going to hurt your filament at all. <laughs> I like that. That's actually pretty funny. Well, that's it. Holy smokes. All right, so I am going to put the spool holder together because now they want me to turn it on and start leveling. So I'm going to put that together real quick, and then we will get some filament fed in here. And then we'll power the sucker up and see what happens. I hate acrylic. I hate peeling that crap off. And it's late, I'm not gonna do it. So I'm gonna do that another day. I do have something different I'm gonna use. Let me grab that. Super simple, they use two bearings. They work, all right. I wanna look at a few more things on this real quick. So okay, that glass is like attached somehow. Okay, so this is ultra base. Uh, so I did see Chuck Hellebuck, he talked about Ultra Base, and he liked it. And it, it adheres onto its glass that has an adhesive backing to it. I mean, it's on there, It's not. that's not coming off at all. Yeah, that's not coming off at all. It says here that PLA, you do 50 to 70, ABS nylon, 90 to 120. So this actually will go that hot, but there's some type of, not Teflon, obviously, it would be slippy, some type of coating on the glass. Almost like it's lasered there somehow. I don't know. I don't know the science behind it, but it is very interesting. And you can use this paper for leveling, if you didn't know that. So I think we're good to go. We're just gonna flip this around so you guys can see what's going on here. Oh, that is one thing that did not come with the kit, was a power cable. Luckily, I'm a huge nerd and I stockpile cables, so I have one somewhere. What do you know? Here we go. So we're going to plug this in and we're going to plug it in over here. That's kind of fun. It plays a song. <laughs> All right. Well, here we are. Actually, I'm going to go sideways for now because otherwise I can't see. But what I can do is I can do this so you guys can see. Bam. Now you guys can see what I'm looking at here on the screen. So check sure all the wires are okay. So we're going to go to uh, tools. Let's touch, it's nice, I like it. Home, and then home all. That worked. That worked. 
and the Z is moving. It's quite loud. Right, we'll go back here and then we're gonna go to setup, motor. Oh, ooh, other printers you can do that. So let's go back here to tools, home, home all. Yeah, let's hit our Z end stop. Now it wants us to go back here. We're gonna go to setup, turn the motors off. All right, motors are off now, they can move freely, and we can check our bed leveling. All right, so it's the regular old, I mean, leveling your bed. If you've done 3D printing for a while, you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. And what you're, what you're doing is, you're gonna move the nozzle from one corner to the next, to next, to next, and by changing up the thumb screws, you will increase or decrease the level to the nozzle in that corner. Eventually, after you do it about two times, all corners will be level and the center will be level as well, and it's done. They walk you through all the steps here in the manual, which is great. So I highly recommend if you're a first time user, please read through the manual and go with that. It seems to be pretty good. That's not too bad. Might be able to move that a little bit more in a minute, but at least that part's done. Okay, so four corners leveled. All right, so we're gonna put the SD card in, which goes in right there. Goes in upside down. Okay, now that's in. And let's go back, we're gonna go print. We're supposed to be an owl pair on Thingiverse, or an owl pair on here. It is not. So I'm going to uh, come right back. I'm gonna go think of us and download the owl pair and uh, Print it be right back So something's wrong with the first SD card adapter that came that the SD mini, micro SD card was in put it in my computer It could see it, but I put it in here. It did not so I switched the other one. There it is. We're gonna go ahead and load some filament and Get this sucker printing so a couple things about this printer that's pretty neat. Uh, it's using dual Z end stops, which is great to ensure that you have an absolutely flat build surface and to ensure that you get consistent uh, bed leveling without using auto bed leveling, but to ensure that both sides equal the same amount every time, which is good. They give you a lot of instructions here on what to do in order to check. So it tells you three different results that might happen. It's either uh, too close, it's perfect or the nozzle is too high. It gives you all of those. So what to do, it tells you how to stop it, what to adjust. So between the bottom of the heated bed and the top of the uh, metal plate, the aluminum plate that is holding the bed there should be about 15 millimeters. So you should adjust that and measure it. Then you can adjust your Z end nuts. If you're still not enough, you need to move that a little bit more. There is a little, uh, there's a screw up here in the top that you can adjust. And yeah, I mean, it tells you all that it's, I mean, I'm pretty impressed with the guide here. It's pretty thorough for everything you need here. I mean, it's pretty simple too. This was a Y carriage and a Z carriage put together and you magically have a printer. Not too bad. So we're heating up, we're heating up fairly quick. I mean, we're already at 52. It's been about a minute, so that's not too bad. And kind of just sitting here looking at this, uh, it's interesting how the Z actually is going uh, sideways. Normally it's say it would be vertical is the way that the belt moves, but here it's horizontal. Just It's just a little bit different than I've seen, which is interesting. Kind of hard to tell what these Y rods are. But I mean, everything else is sheet aluminum. You know, I'd say two mil, three mil. Nothing crazy thick, but it's still more than most printers have. And this, this carriage right here is huge. Absolutely huge. Print cooling fan came on already. Oh no, it didn't. That's just the so the extruder fan is on the right. The print cooling fan is on the left. Uh, big old warning sticker on here. Let you know to be careful. This is everything that's going for the fans and the hot end and the thermistor. All go through this great big green connector right here. Very interesting setup. Very different than other printers that I've seen or that I've used even. And off the races we go. It's taken five minutes to do all of that.
Looks to be a pretty good first layer to me, so I'm going to switch the GoPro over to time lapse. And assuming this all goes well, I'm going to let this go ahead and print, and we'll come back and see a completed print. All right, so we're back. It's the next day, and I finished a couple quick test prints here. I have the OW test print that they had on the SD card. I went ahead and printed that. Then I printed three Benchies. So the first one was the Benchy with the stock Simplify 3D profile that's in Simplify 3D when you load in a new printer. And then I made a tweak and I did another print and then I did another tweak using some of their Cura settings in Simplify 3D and I came out with that third Benchy. So let's take a look at how those turned out. Okay, so the very first one were these two owls and they came out really nice. I mean, they're really small. I mean, you can see on my hand. I mean, they're maybe an uh, inch and a half, two inches tall at most. And it's a little guy and girl. One's got a top hat. This one's got a little flower. These were three perimeters. If I had to guess, 20% mm, infill about. But the bottoms were absolutely perfect. It gives you the little troubleshooting guide here in their uh, book on, you know, if it's, again, I showed this so it's too close, it's just right, or it's too far. So they give you those steps on how you could fix that. I leveled this once and I was good to go. But yeah, these turned out absolutely perfect, really. I mean, honestly, on the back, their backs are crazy smooth. There's zero Z-banding whatsoever. Uh, this one, you could see one retraction point right here, or a few retraction points, but that was it. The, on the male, you can't see anything. You know, supportless model, but yeah, I mean, it just, these turned out beautifully. And these were the ones that were on the SD card. So this is the first thing I printed. All right, so then I printed this Benchy using the stock Simplify 3D profile for this printer. As you can see, tons of stringing going on in there. It was pretty bad retraction settings. I also thought the filament uh, temperature was too high. This was at 205. Again, that's what the default was. And you can see some retractions in here, uh, some along the back here as well. But I mean, the bottom came out pretty good. This, this came up just a little bit there for some reason, I don't know why, but other than that, bottom layer, baby smooth. So this is the first Benchy. Then I made a few settings, changes. I lowered the temperature down to 190 degrees Fahrenheit, it's still 60 degree bed, and I upped the retraction from the default 1.5 to two millimeters. I still thought that was kind of low because this is a Bowden setup, but I figured let's give it a shot, see what happens. And you can see here as well, there are lots of attraction uh, Changes here that you can see bottom layer was perfect though. I've actually I don't think I've ever seen a bottom layer That good to be honest The back you can read but yeah still stringy here So I went ahead and took the settings that are in the book for Cura and I put them in Simplify 3d and Came up with this Benchy as you can see This is probably the greatest Benchy I have ever printed bar none there are practically no retraction changes that you can see. Very few right here, but it's black filament, so that shows up really easily. Bottom layer, perfect. Back was good, but I mean, but you can see there's, I mean, no overhangs drooping down at all. The doors, the windows came out beautifully. The steering wheel in there, it's hard to see, but that came out just gorgeous. I have to say, this was a doggone good benchy, not gonna lie. Everything filled in at the top. I was super happy with this. So this was the third and final one I did in Simplify 3D using some of their Cura settings. So now we see how it prints. Honestly, it prints pretty good. There's a little few tweaks that I would make in the default Simplify 3D uh, profile and that mainly just I would lower the, the extrusion temperature. I would adjust a few of the speeds to do a slower first layer and I would up the retraction to five millimeters, which is what they recommend. So I wanna finish going through the book here just so you guys know what to ex expect. It tells you about the software installation on how to install Cura. They are still using Cura 15. Dot, mm, I forget which version it is. It's one of the old versions that they're using. And I really don't agree with using 15.04.6. Uh, and we're on Cura 3.0 of the new beta ones, I guess they're calling it. But you can either slice it in Cura, put it on the SD card and print it, or you can hook this up directly install the driver which comes on the SD card on your PC and then you can go ahead and install Cura and hook it up that way. There also are Mac files on the SD card so you can install this on your Mac as well. Uh, it runs through all the installation, how to do all that. So if you're a first time 3D printer, an excellent guide I'd have to say. Uh, I'm not reading, I have not read through it word for word but skimming through and looking at all the different steps and just knowing how to do it for myself for how to install drivers, things like that, 
I'm thoroughly impressed with what they've done. I just really don't think they should be using such an old version of Cura. They should be using a much newer version, at least 2.6 because that's been out for a few months now, or even like 2.4, something that's you know been out for several months, something newer than 15 dot change. Uh, and then it tells you how to add the printer since this printer is in Simplify 3D, it is not in Cura. So you have to add a custom model. It t runs you through how to do all those settings, everything like that. And then it tells you how to set up all your settings, what the build volume should be. And it also gives you a few uh, actual settings on what to set in Cura for your first prints. It also tells you how to use Cura, which I thought was pretty interesting. Uh, how to load the models, how to manipulate the models, look at the layers, a lot of different things that might not be intuitive to someone who's new to Cura. I give them props for that as well. Uh, again, here's the settings, and again, it runs through all the different settings that you should be set. It's a little bit different in Cura 3.0, or any of the older, any of the two plus ones uh, than 15. So you kind of have to tweak through your settings and try and find the ones then match it up to what they're saying that you should add it to or have. And then they start going to the advanced things that like tweak at Z. So if you want to change different settings at different Z heights, it runs you through how to do something like that, how to save the G code, and then how to actually print. So how to preheat your extruder and how to preheat the bed, how to start the print runs through all of that in here with pictures of the screen, which is also great so that you're not kind of guessing. And it's pictures, which makes it much more easy than like a regular Marlin, uh, you know, a 2020 or the 2004 display, which is just a bunch of characters. You're not quite sure what you're looking at. A picture of a, of a bed with heat waves coming off of it, that's the heated bed click. So easy enough. Uh, there is a, which I'm glad to see in here, and if you do read through this manual, they do tell you never direct scraper to your hands. As I said, this is quite dangerous. Do not kind of take a print off and hold the bed and just go right into your hand. That could hurt quite a bit and cause a lot of damage. So again, be careful and they tell you about that here. But they're telling you that you need the scraper on the bed. These are small prints and usually they would pop off almost anything. They literally were almost not even attached when this build plate cooled. This ultra base build plate by Anycubic, it's glass with some type of stickness on it some type of uh, something on the top. I don't even know what it is. They don't say anywhere. I'd have to look it up. And it's adhered to the uh, aluminum heated bed. This stuff is amazing. Things go down on it super smooth like glass, but they hold like you're using PEI. And it, when it's cool, they literally are not even attached anymore. They've popped off already once it's cooled down. So you want to keep your temperature at temperature, the entire print at 60 for uh, PLA and then let it cool down on its own, it pops off on its own. I mean, it was super sweet. And another thing this has is resume from outage, apparently. So I'm pretty interested in that. I'm not gonna try that out with this video. That will be in maybe a future video. Maybe I'll just do a quick one just on showing what that looks like to someone who is interested in it. I'm certainly interested because none of my printers, this is, I don't know what a number printer this is, it's a lot none of them have that kind of feature but this apparently does that's cool very cool in my opinion uh, and then it goes into a couple other advanced things on how to start how to edit your start and stop g code and a couple different things it gives you links to some of the rep wrap forms and wikis where you can go to actually find information and do it for yourself they don't tell you exactly what to put there but they show you how to get to it and then the resources to go and research it yourself I commend them for that. I think that's pretty good as well. And then the back two pages are nothing but troubleshooting, which is great to see uh, something like that. So I honestly think this is one of the best manuals I've seen. Again, going through, I've had a few manuals now uh, that it comes, it, now this comes with it. It's not something you print. Everything was in here. Everything works straight off the bat except for that uh, power supply issue. But so yeah, so that's going to wrap up pretty much the First look at the Anycubic i3 Mega. I think this was a very, very interesting design. It's different than what I've seen in other i3 styles. It's still the same basic principle, the same Cartesian style printer, but it's a new way to implement it. There's some things I like, some things I don't, but we'll have to wait and see how it prints after a while with some different filaments. I'll put some different things through it, you know, and we'll see how all that turns out. So one last time, this was sent to me by GearBest for the purpose of this review. I was not paid in any way for this review except them sending me this printer and it is mine to keep once the review is complete. 
So I guess thank you out to GearBest for sending it to me. And if you guys want to purchase this printer, I will put links, affiliate links down below if you guys want to purchase that. Affiliate links help uh, me make a little bit back from doing everything that I do, all the purchases I make for the channel. The affiliate links help supplement what you don't make via YouTube, which is basically nothing. So I appreciate anyone that uses those. And if I have a coupon code, which I don't know off the top of my head, I will put it down there and then you can pick this up for a little bit cheaper. And that's that guys. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Didn't thumbs down. Talk to me in the comments down below what I can do better next time. If you guys want to support me, best way to do that, subscribe. If you want to support me financially, there's a Patreon link down below. Don't even a dollar more. I greatly appreciate it. Current Patreons, you guys are awesome. You help pay for a lot of the projects I do here on the channel. And if you want to support me without spending your money, affiliate links for this printer and for other vendors that I have down there, Amazon being one of the largest, Christmas is coming up now. So if you wouldn't mind updating your bookmarks and using those, a little slice of what you buy comes to me. It is at no extra cost to you whatsoever. So thank you guys for watching. And until next time, happy printing.